There's one more prayer that I would recommend called the Unity Prayer. That is part of the Revelations to Elizabeth Kindleman. Isn't it funny her name is Kindleman? Isn't that funny? Because the flame of love is meant to be kindled in all men. And her name is Kindleman. That cannot be a coincidence. God always does this. He's always winking at us, the good Lord. He does these little things in our lives. This could not be a coincidence. Kindle men. He wants to enkindle in all men the flame of love. And there's a prayer called the Unity Prayer that our Lord and Our Lady dictated to Miss Elizabeth that's been approved by Cardinal Erdo and the hierarchy that's exquisitely and wondrously beautiful. And the prayer goes something like this. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. It is a delightful and beautiful prayer. And the Lord told Miss Elizabeth that this prayer captures the essence of what He desires. See, we don't realize God wants us more than we want Him. This is the, the most amazing irony in the history of mankind. God wants us more than we want Him. He desires us. He told Mother Teresa, I thirst, I thirst for souls, for human souls. He wants sons and daughters. He wants as many as possible. He's like a homeschooling family that has 15 children, but he wants 15 million or 15 billion. He wants more children. He thirsts for us. And he's waiting for that fire of divine love to break forth across the earth. And now we can participate in that desire, that hunger of God for souls by using the flame of love prayers. And that unity prayer, he said, captured his heart. It captures the sacred heart of Jesus, that he wants to be one with us and walk with us. His thoughts be one with us. He wants to be one with his children. It captures that. But there's something even more. It's very dynamic and very charismatic. To me, that's more important, the loving union with God that that prayer expresses and brings about, but there's something more. And that is the Lord promised Miss Elizabeth that this prayer and the shorter prayer as well, that the flame of love would come down when we say this prayer over us, wherever we are, and literally, I'll just quote, blind Satan. It will blind the devil. And I've seen this prayer work in a miraculous fashion in front of me. And I'll just express this and really concisely that I had a woman demonized at my little healing chapel in Georgia who was manifesting demonic presences at the end of mass unexpectedly, a visitor, screaming and foaming at the mouth, a true diabolical manifestation. I wasn't frightened and I've seen it thousands of times. I've been trained as an exorcist in, in Rome. And so I knew what to do. I had my team gather around her immediately. And, of course, you can't do an exorcism immediately without permission from the bishop. But I wasn't sure she was fully possessed. But I know we're allowed to pray. We have to pray immediately. We pray the rosary and other prayers. So I had my team, because we had an emergency, pray this unity prayer with me. The Flame of Love Unity Prayer. I said it line by line, and they repeated it as we circled around her. My adorable Jesus, my adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together, may our feet journey together. We said the whole lovely prayer together in the space of one minute. And as we did, that poor woman was completely released from whatever it was in front of our eyes. In fact, about 70 witnesses. And she actually put her hands together, knelt down on the floor in front of us, bowed her head in front of me for a blessing, and was completely at peace. I have never seen this before. And God has given me the great grace to work in the exorcism and deliverance ministry for more than 40 years. I actually started as a teenager helping my pastor. He asked me to help him. So I've seen this work for many years. I have never seen anyone release in one minute, ever. It was stunningly, radically beautiful. 
I want to shout hurrah, hurrah. You just made my job 10 times easier. Now he's given us a new grace and a new gift for every exorcist, for every priest, for every religious, for every layman, for every teenager. To say this prayer, immediately the power of God comes down in the flame of love and blinds the devil. And Mama Mary said when he does that, the flame of love, when it, she said Jesus is the flame of love. When he blinds that evil spirit, Mama says the devil is completely confused and powerless. He can't do anything. And then that gives the grace of God room to operate, room to move. So this is a priceless weapon. Every single Catholic and every Protestant in the world should be saying this prayer every day. And if we do, we will completely blind the devil off the face of the earth. We will bind him completely through this prayer. I would encourage everyone to say this prayer every day. Say it at least once for yourself and your family, then say it a second time for your country and for the world. This is a gift from heaven. That old saying, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. This is a great gift. Let's say this prayer together, all of us, to bring about quickly, quickly, quickly the victory. It brings the flame of love. It blinds the evil spirit. It brings conversion and healing. Something great is coming. And we are being asked through and with the flame of love to participate as Mary's faithful sons and daughters, to participate in her grand victorious action of crushing the head of the serpent and casting him off the face of the earth, as was prophesied in sacred scripture in the book of Genesis, the first prophecy of God to the human race that the heel of the woman would crush the serpent's head. It is time for that prophecy to be fulfilled. We have nothing to be afraid of. We should say these two prayers daily. And if nothing else, just look at your teenagers. They are dying. They are dying. We have betrayed them utterly and completely as a nation, as a people, the school systems, even the churches. We have betrayed our young people. They are dying. We have to save the world. We have to save the young people. Say this prayer and protect your beloved young people. Something good is coming soon, but God needs you and I to respond, and we will see the victory with our own eyes, even in our own lifetime.